Amos 5, 6 says, come back to the Lord and live. Have you, I know I have, as a Christian, slept, fallen, fallen a little short? Romans 3.23, everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's, excuse me, God's glorious standard. So if you're like me, many of us, it's tough to get back up. Even though you know you're forgiven, sometimes it's even tough to go back to church and pretend that all is well. It's like when you go to church or any place really, and someone says, how you doing? And the automatic answer is, I'm doing good. Well, you know what? Sometimes we're not doing good. And if we as a church group would stop saying I'm doing good when I'm not doing good, you might get somebody to say, oh, well, let's pray. Not I will pray for you, because to be honest with you, as I get older, I forget a lot. Uh, but I will pray with you right now. If you have a need, Acknowledge it when someone says, how are you doing? Well, I got a problem. Okay, we'll pray about it. And that's our fault if we don't do that. There's a song, uh, it is well with my soul. So make sure it really is well. Do you ever say like uh, Paul said in Romans 7.15, I don't understand myself for what I do is not right. It's not what I want to do. Instead, I do what I hate. Why do we do the same old things? When I became a Christian, when I actually accepted the Lord, long, long time ago now, uh, I had, as we all do, different problems. One of my real problems was I swore all the time. I always swearing about everything. And you know, God is so faithful. Uh, the group I was with, the church I was with, this is in Massachusetts, uh, they said, oh, we're going to paint this building and the owner of the building will pay the, uh, the missions budget for the whole year. So will you help us paint? And man, I'm thinking to myself, oh, all I gotta do is get in with these Christian people that I'm kind of sort of now one of and get paint on me and I know the words that are gonna come out. <laughs> so, you know, when you have that kind of a need, you really, really pray hard. And I did. And you know what? I almost since that point, we're talking a lot of years, I almost never swear. And I didn't swear at that paint part of the we had either. But it is the old habit, stuff that's tough to do, stuff that I've been dealing with. I know I shouldn't be doing it, but as Paul said, it's not me, it's the sin in me. God knows that. That's why he gave us Romans 8.1. We are not condemned. But oftentimes we condemn ourselves. And that's something we have to get over. Because if God says we are clean, we are not condemned. Who are we to say, oh yeah, I still, I'm condemned, I'm still doing this. Well, you know what, that is a really wrong attitude because God says we are now clean. He says in Corinthians, we are a new creation. I'm not the old me. In Romans 12, too, it talks about getting out of the world, not being part of the world system anymore. You know what, if you're not part of the world system, then don't hang out in it. Be part of God's church. Hang out here. We are a fellowship. We are friends. Most times when I come up to someone to hug, they don't back away. They actually stand up and hug me because that's the kind of church we are. We're a friendly fellowship. So do not condemn yourself. I just want to read a quick little story here. It's called a lifetime guarantee. And it's kind of about somebody that slipped. Will you take me back, dear Lord? I've been gone for you so long. I've lost track of all my sins and I've spent years in doing wrong. I did so many prideful things and shamelessly did boast. I broke so many loving hearts and hurt the people I love most. 
I've heard about atonement, I've been warned of judgment day, and even though I listened, I still strayed far away. Will you welcome me back again, dear Lord? And forgive me one more time. Will you share your father's love with me? Sorry, I'm just a crybaby. <clears throat> Will you share your father's love with me if I truly give you mine? I'm so sorry that I left you, God. I'm sad and now and, now and low. God smiled, you didn't leave me, child. <laughs> I never let you go. I promise you salvation. My word cannot be undone. You will get a lifetime guarantee when I gave my precious son. You know what? Don't feel condemned. You are not condemned by God. And I pray that you would never be in a church or family situation where you are condemned. Because that's not what God says. God says you are not condemned. You're a new creation. Jesus said, remember me. And as he answered the thief on the cross when he said, remember me, today you will be in paradise. That wasn't heaven, that was paradise. That was kind of a holding place. But Jesus also said, and this is in Matthew 26, right after they finished eating in what we call the Last Supper, while they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And when he had taken up the cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. The blood of the new covenant. The new covenant is salvation through Jesus Christ and his death on the cross and his resurrection. That's the new covenant. We have to remember that. We're not bound by the old law. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Father God, we thank you that we are forgiven. Yesterday's sins today's and tomorrow's, they're all forgiven. You tell us you're not even gonna remember them anymore. We know that you could, but you don't because you love us. And that love is just so unfathomable. I just can't even understand how you could love someone like me, but I know you do. I know because you gave your son for me, for all of us, but for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are. I pray that you continue to be in the lives of every single one of us through the Holy Spirit. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.